Hi, I'm Dr. Bruce Miller. I'm an evangelist and also the executive vice president of Independent Baptist Online College. Do you ever have stress? Not you. Ah, oh, come on. Your life's a breeze, right? No stress. It keeps getting better and better. No stress. We're on easy street, right? No, we're not. And our example is Jesus, right? Yes, that's right. He did say, follow me. Now, in context, he said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. But he said, follow me. And how did he handle stress? He had stress? Oh, yeah. He knew that he had to die on the cross. He knew he would be beaten. He knew he would be scourged. He knew he would be lied about and nailed to the cross and bear the sins of all mankind and die and suffer the punishment that all of us would ever suffer in hell and the lake of fire, all compacted together in his body on the tree. But he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Well, what about my stress, Brother Miller? Well, I just want to share a little testimony with you. I'm under a lot of stress. I'm 73 years old, and guess what I found out? As you get older, little things seem bigger. I, I think that's true. The, uh, we, we, my generation, the brothers, used to not stress about big problems. Now, little problems become big problems, and that causes stress in our lives. And then I've stayed in the ministry. And my wife has health problems. And I have a few health problems. And I've stayed in the ministry. And I have very, very limited income. Uh, and on top of that, there are all kinds of ministerial problems. And I bear the problems of others in prayer, but in counseling to the Lord as a pastor and as an evangelist and training people. There's stress. There's legal problems at times, stress in our society today. Now, Jesus was going to the cross and he knew it. And the Bible says, and this is important, in Matthew 26, this is so important, starting in verse 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Sure. He's feeling the press. He's very heavy. He knows what's going to happen in a few hours or less. Then saith the end of them, my soul is exceedingly, exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Carry you here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will but as thou will. And then he went back to find his three prayer warriors sleeping. Now he becomes burdened about them, not just himself. And in verse 41, after he rebukes them, what? That woke him up. Could you not watch with me one hour? Verse 40, now verse 41. Listen to this. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He goes and prays again for himself. He comes back to check on his prayer warriors a second time, and he found them asleep again, verse 43. And verse 44, he left them and went away and prayed the third time, saying the same words. But notice that admonition. He said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. They were going to be in the trial with him. He wanted them with him but they couldn't even pray with it. And his, his warning was, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. What kind of temptation can stress bring? You might not have time to read your Bible, cut out time to pray. They were sleeping instead of praying. You might um, get in the flesh, scream at people, holler at people, Slam doors, throw stuff around. Say things you do not intend to say and that would not, you wouldn't get up in front of the church and say, and would not honor God. Now, he honored God at all times. 
the meaner and the more pain he was in, he showed compassion. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was concerned about his mother. He said, uh, take my mother in your home, John. Take care of her. Uh, he was nailed to the cross at that point. He'd already been beaten, crowned with thorns, etc. He'd been humiliated. He'd been spit on. They took his clothes off on him. He was naked on a cross. And he was concerned about somebody else. You know what he had? He had the fruit of the spirit because he'd been praying. Love, joy, peace. He had temperance of tongue, temperance of thought, control. That's what we need when we live stressful lives, folks. Peter, how'd he do? He goes out, and when they come to catch Jesus, he pulls out a sword, cuts a guy's ear off. The guy's name was Malchus. That wasn't what Jesus wanted. He picked up the ear and put it back on Malchus. Uh, what Peter do because he had not prayed? Well, he was warming himself around a tent, around a fire, and three times he lied. He lied and said he didn't even know Jesus. And then the third time he cussed him out and took off. How the other disciples do? They all forsook him and fled. You know why? Because they hadn't watched and prayed. We never know when. Bam, a stressful situation is going to hit us. And so we need to prepare every morning. Let God prepare our hearts as we read the Bible, as we watch, and as we pray. And yield ourselves to the Lord and ask God for the fruit of the Spirit. Watch and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Watch and pray lest ye enter into temptation when the stress comes. Watch and pray.